Hey, what is up guys and welcome to another RB and Hardware video. And in today's video, we're gonna build the best gaming PC under $1,500 that you can hopefully pick up by the end of February in 2021. Now in this video, we're gonna go over the whole building process of this PC from start to finish. And we then go into start of the PC to look at what kind of frame rate or FPS you can expect in some of the most popular games. As always, if you find anything you like, all items are linked up down below. Now, I know the stock for PC components is pretty much non-existent right now, but hopefully by the time you're watching this, the situation has hopefully gotten a bit better. So spending about $1236 gives you a PC that is able to run any game out there at 1080p, 1440p, as well as 4K with pretty good frame rate. Now we're obviously gonna dive into the gaming performance later, but to give you guys an idea, here's what kind of frame rate you can expect in 14 games that I've been testing again. Yeah, we're gonna look the uh, gaming performance and these benchmarks much more in detail a bit later in today's video. Anyway, inside this PC we find 16GB of RAM, a high clocked Zen 3 based Ryzen processor, a 500GB M.2 SSD from Kingston, as well as a Radeon Big Navi graphics card from Team Red. Everything contained inside this sleek and minimalistic NZX DKs. Anyway, timestamps can be found down below. Now, before we get started, be sure to drop a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Drop a like if you enjoy the content and make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode. So as always, I like to kick the build off with CPU, RAM and motherboard and for today's build, we're gonna use the B550 AM DS3H coming in at $94. This is an extremely reliable motherboard from Gigabyte with fantastic price to performance value. Now saving a bit on the motherboard won't have any impact on the gaming performance, but this will give us more money so that we can include a faster graphics card in our budget and this will result in higher FPS and our favorite game. So let's take a look at the processor coming in at $299. This is the Ryzen 5 5600X and this one comes with 6 cores and 12 threads with the base clock at 3.7 and 4.6 GHz turbo. Now having a look at the CPU gaming performance, we see that the 5600X does great versus the competition. In fact, it's actually able to beat even Intel's fastest and most expensive Core i9 in some titles. So this is a beast and it will work especially well in eSport like games where a CPU performance is particularly important. As we can see our motherboard comes with a retention frame but since we're using a cooler with springs, yeah we need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard. Installing the processor is quite simple, you wanna locate the golden triangle on the processor and this triangle lines up with the triangle on our motherboard socket. And you simply want to turn the CPU so that the triangles match up. Open the metal arm, drop the processor into the socket, put the metal arm down and our CPU is now installed. Now inside uh, the CPU box also comes a heatsink which is good enough for stock settings and the cooler installment is pretty simple. Now if this is the first time installing the CPU cooler, you should have some thermal grease pre-applied and in that case you don't need to apply some thermal grease on the CPU lid. Position the CPU cooler over the 4 spring screws so that the heatsink lines with the 4 holes on the back plate. And once aligned, carefully place the heatsink onto the CPU. Using a screwdriver, turn the spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Then follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler, further tightening each spring screw with a full turn. And with all four spring screws connected to the back plate, tighten them until you feel resistance. Then check the CPU cooler to double check that it's properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Moving on to memory and we gotta pick these quality 16GB DDR4 sticks from Corsair and these are rated at 3200MHz speed. Now 16GB actually meet the recommended requirement for most games out there in 2021 and this is going to be enough for gaming for quite a while. 
Now the speed for these are 3200 MHz and that will give you a slight increase in FPS versus a slow clocked memory kit as the way that the CPU operates. Having faster clock RAM can gain a bit of performance in your favorite game. However, it is important that you activate the so-called XMP profile in BIOS in order to enjoy this frame rate boost and I'll link up a video down below that shows you how to do this. Now we're gonna populate the gray slot so simply pull back the toggle for the second and the fourth dim slot and simply plug in the RAM sticks just like so. So let's install our M.2 drive. Now this particular one comes from Kingston. This is 480 gigabyte and it will cost you roughly $60 which is totally worth it. This drive is insanely fast guys and to put things in perspective this M.2 unit is about 35% faster than a traditional hard drive. So yeah <laughs> with this drive you can say goodbye to long lasting loading screens. So we want to locate the M.2 slot and we find this right underneath the CPU cooler and so what you want to do is you want to loosen this tiny screw just like so then gently slide the M.2 unit into the socket with the little notch you see here on the opposite side of the CPU cooler just like so. Finally take the little screw and hold it down like this and then finally take the little screw hold it down and screw it down until it stops and with that done guys our actual motherboard assembly is actually done and completed and we can go ahead and move on to our chassis or case and in today's build we're gonna use the H510i or H510 from NZXT coming in at $70 or $99 if you end up picking the one that's got RGB. Now this awesome looking mid-size enclosure comes with two pre-installed 120 fans with dust filters across all intakes. Now, as can be seen the front consists of a solid metal front which yeah does affect the cooling a bit however this is not a deal breaker and if you want you can easily install up to two 140 fans at the front to push even more air over the GPU. NZXT also sells a model with a so-called smart hub and two LED strips and this one is called H510 with an I at the end. Now these features add another $40 to the price tag. This is totally worth it in my opinion but if you aren't interested in that you can simply pick the non-A model and you will save $30. Anyway, both cases are linked up down below. For I.O. at the top we find one USB 3 as well as a mic and audio combo jack. And ZXT has also fitted the case with a USB Type-C port. But since our motherboard doesn't have any internal USB Type-C connectors, you won't be able to use this port. However, if it is important to you, I will be linking up a motherboard with this connector as well. So first thing we have to do is we have to prep the case and the first thing you want to do is you want to take off this one thumb screw holding the tempered glass. Next, we're gonna install our IO shield that we find inside the motherboard box and this one goes in from the back of the case with the circular, these audio ports located at the bottom that we can just grab onto the CPU fan and slide the motherboard into place and we can install and secure the motherboard. We're using the screws that comes provided from NZXT. With the motherboard installed before we move on to power supply and graphics, now is a good time to install the chassis cables that take care of the front audio and USB. So let's start with USB 3. This is a wide connector. And this is what it looks like. Simply route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. The connector is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Next up we have the USB connector and this one goes to a connector that is located right next to the USB 3 connector. Moving on to front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly we have the front panel connector and you find this on the right side. Moving on to power supply and I chose this 650 watt unit from Corsair. This is a compact and silent high quality PSU with 80 plus bronze efficiency certifications with black sleeve cables 
coming in at under $70. Now make sure you got the fan facing downwards then gently slide at the PCU into place and secure it. We're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics and first up we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next up we got the 8 pin ESP for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Time to install our graphics card and for today's build we find the Radeon RX 6800 Big Navi graphics card from Team Red or AMD. This one being specifically from Power Color based on AMD's reference design. Now the 6800 comes with a whopping 16GB of RAM which is perfectly good enough for even heavy 4K gaming. However as most of you guys already know GPUs are almost impossible to buy right now. Hopefully though the situation should get better anytime soon now. Now thanks to the GPU only consuming about 220 watts of power, a single PCIe cable is enough for this GPU. So simply take this cable and plug it into a graphics card just like so and our graphics is actually installed. And what is left to do now is to flip the case around, whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our $1200 gaming PC and if you did everything right your system should yeah, power on. Now chances are you're gonna need to perform a BIOS update if you pick up the motherboard and CPU close to when this video was released. Now this is super easy and only takes a minute or two. But that being said there is also a chance that you don't even have to do this step. Now to tell if you need to do this update or not simply turn on your PC and if you only see on a black screen the update will be necessary and here's how you do it. All you need is a USB stick, your backup PC and an internet connection. First you need to make sure that the USB stick is formatted to FAT32. Simply right click on your drive and select format followed by FAT32 followed by format. Now download the latest available BIOS from Gigabyte so you can do this by heading over to the link listed down in the video description. Then head over to BIOS and download the latest available update. Once downloaded extract the content to the USB unit. And make sure to rename uh, this file to gigabyte.bin exactly the way that it's presented on screen. Then plug in the USB into this white BIOS flash port and press the flash button which you find at the lower right side of the motherboard. And an LED will start flashing for a few minutes. Eventually your PC will restart which indicate that our update is completed. With that done let's fire up some games and find out how our new PC performs. On your screen now are all the performance numbers that I've gathered from today's build and I ended up running 14 games or so I think and overall I am very happy with the results. As we can see I run tests in both uh, 1440p and also 4k resolution with maxed out settings. But let's dive a bit deeper with some of the games being tested. And Godfall is first up and as we can see the RX 6800 shows RTX 3080 level performance as can be seen. And if we compare this to the RTX 3070 the big Navi GPU is about 18 to 19% faster. Now jumping over to 4K resolution, the 6800 is losing a bit of ground here uh, compared to the green team, but it is still over 10% faster than the RTX 3070, 14 to 50% slower than the RTX 3080. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where RDNA 2 has proven to be very competitive versus Nvidia. Looking at numbers we see that the $580 6800 actually beat Nvidia's $700 3080 and the 6800 is almost 30% faster than the RTX 3070 at 1440p. And bumping the resolution to 4K the 6800 is once again losing a bit of ground versus the competition as can be seen. Moving on to Death Stranding at 1440p we see that the 6800 is about 5% slower than the 3080 and quite a lot faster than the RTX 3070. However versus the RTX 3070 for example the 6800 shows good form with more than 10% performance advantage. Next up we got Battlefield 5 running at ultra settings at 1080p 
And as we can see, the 6800 is only a few FPS lower than the much more expensive RTX 3080. Moving on to control, the RX 6800 once again shows respectable frame rates. And as we can see, it's safely putting itself right between the 3070 and the 3080. Gears 5 is up next and once again we find the RX 6800 right between the 3070 and the 3080 regardless of resolution. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is next up and we run the game at ultra settings using the Vulcan API where the 6800 shows healthy numbers even at 4K resolution. And with 16GB of G6 memory you don't have to worry, <laughs> running out of video memory. Red Dead Redemption 2 is another game running on Vulcan but in this game the distance to the 3080 is much smaller only with a few FPS distance and at 4K, uh, the 6800 is for the first time hard to reach at the magic 60 FPS mark. However, both Metro Exodus and Division 2 runs great on the 6800 even at 4K and it tells us for the most part you're able to run your favorite game at 4K max out and still average 60 FPS which is just insane price to performance. Now before we conclude the benchmark, let's quickly also have a look at ray tracing and if you've been following the rumors around Big Navi, there have been quite a few rumors suggesting that AMD was gonna be a bit behind Nvidia here and that does seem to be the case as well. As we can see running Battlefield 5 regardless of resolution, the 6800 shows about 20 to 22% uh, slower frame rate versus the 3070 and this seemed to be true for Metro Exodus as well. And so as we can see guys so far AMD is falling a bit behind Nvidia when it comes to ray tracing and so if that is important to you, well as of the time being at least, you should pick the green team. But if you rather pick the best performing graphics card for its price tag and you don't really care about ray tracing, the 6800 offers unbeatable priced performance at $579. Again guys, all PC components can be found down below. I, I am starting up a Discord server and it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join and start discussing PC builds and issues and I'm obviously going to hang out there and answer any questions you guys might have. So definitely join the Discord server and you find the link down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.